Morning, everyone. I know you can't say morning back, so good morning from me and Chris. Morning. Not here in back from you. Just wait for a few, there's still people coming into the room, so we'll get started when everyone's in. In what I'll, do is I'll I'll start sharing my screen now. It looks like most people are in, so we can get started. Um, once I've got this set up. So I, I mean I can't see the chat, but can everybody see the presentation? It's working for me, yeah. yeah that's right, that's good enough for me. So I guess just from me and Chris, uh, we say, well, thanks for everyone for, for coming in. Uh, webinar two of quite a long series of different webinars pulled together from those in the Confidence Choices um, sort of network. Um, today we're going to be looking at the encounters with FE and HE providers. Um, so um, I will do um, a lot of talking and then you'll get some respite from me uh, when Chris takes over and just has a look at the kind of things BGU um, has to offer. Um, I think from our perspective, um, obviously everyone's on mute and uh, I think most cameras are turned off anyway. Um, I think what, what there is on uh, Zoom is the chat function. We did say we'd try and answer questions as we go along, um, but I think it will be easier if anyone has a question just to throw it in the chat and then we'll pick it up afterwards. Um, I think John Gibbons from Link Hire is in the call as well, so he can answer questions as we go along from a link higher perspective, uh, just as, as we're going along, if you can. But we will pick up any questions towards the end. And also, if anyone's just got any comments or ideas, it'd be really good to throw them in the, in the chat. What we're really keen to do is use this as a chance to just throw ideas at each other. Um, I think, again, it's, it's a really good opportunity not to look at encounters with FE and HE, but also to share ideas around what other people are doing. Uh, so yeah, please do use the chat function for that. Um, Cause I think it'd be really good to, just to hear what people are doing uh, you know, around the county. Um, so what we are going to look at, if the slide changes, um, I'm gonna give you a very brief background to um, Link Hire and you know, the podcast. <coughs> sure most of you have heard it a million times but there might be people in the chat who aren't as familiar with the work we do so we'll just touch on on link hire uh, look at again the definition of fe and he encounters i'm not going to be teaching you how to suck because i'm sure you all know um you know what an fe and he encounter is a big thing that we're not we're not going to be doing today is looking at the statutory duty around fe and he encounters what we really want to do is use this as an opportunity to look at how we can make them more meaningful and more effective and just add value to those um, encounters. So it's not actually me looking at um, you know, what is expected of a school, how exactly you know, you're going to meet Gatsby 7. Um, actually, we, we just wanted to use this as a forum uh, to discuss how we make them more meaningful um, and yeah, how we make them more effective, particularly from the perspective of a young person because um, at the end of that, that's who we're representing here. Um, so, you know, how do we make them more effective for our young people? But at the same time, you know, we won't present some idealistic view of how to do FE and HE encounters. We understand there are, you know, boundaries within, within the school setting from a college perspective. So that, you know, there are barriers in the way of doing effective FE and HE visits. Really, we just want to show you how 
think I can help, how BG you can help, and also how you, know, you can use the Confident Choices Network um, to also just pull on each other's expertise. Um, obviously, as, as with everything, COVID-19 has had an impact on this. So if we were doing this talk you know, three months ago, I think we'd be coming at it from a very different angle, but we accept that um, COVID-19 has had you know, quite a significant impact on what FE and HE encounters and visits could look like for the next year moving forward. So we are going to you know, focus on that and look at how we make them effective and what the Linkage plans are and probably even more helpfully what, what BGU, BGU are planning uh, from a post-COVID perspective. Um, and again, just any questions at the end, we will pick them up um, in there as well. So if you've got questions you go along, just feel free to throw them in the chat and we will pick them up um, at the end. Um, so if you've got anything you want to add there, Chris. Oh, no, no, very much. Um, when I come in, I'll be just talking about some of the opportunities that we offer uh, and also how we make those encounters meaningful and then some of the, the plans we've got going ahead um, to try and counter the impact of COVID-19. Okay, so um, yeah, very brief overview of Linkaya. So there's a lot of text here. Um, yeah, this is the overview of, of our programme. We are set up in Jan 17 and yeah, our objective is, is to raise aspirations of young people towards higher education. And I think that's important to mention the context of this talk. Um, you know, we have our own agenda as well, that we do want to encourage more young people to be progressing onto HE. So you know, we do come at this from an angle where we would encourage as many young people and schools to engage with Empire and get them out um, to, to look in at those high level qualifications. Um, but, you know, we, we do work with a, a whole spectrum of, of young people and we work with the school to understand the barriers that, that your students do have to those progressions to, to HE and onto FE as well. So we do tailor it to, to your year groups and to your schools. So we've been around since Jan 17. We started our second phase in August of last year and we are around until July 2021 at the moment. There was a phase three from August, but you know, we don't know what that looks like. Um, so I think it's just important that um, from our perspective, we do expect to be leaning on our partners more as, as we move forward through the next year and beyond. So our partners are in, in the bottom right corner of, of the screen, but yeah, it's all of the FE colleges, it's both HEIs in Lincolnshire. Um, you know, we are likely to, to be drawing on their expertise and what they can offer to schools. So it fits in quite nicely with encounters with FE and HE anyway. We currently only work years 9 to 13. Um, so we've been tasked to work with from the OFS. Um, from the year 13 perspective, we can work with over 19 year olds. Um, that was a change at phase two. So previously we couldn't work with anybody under the age, uh, over the age of 19, but we can now work beyond that. We are nationally funded. We're one of 29 around the county and each partnership is made up of higher education providers. So that's FE colleges and higher education institutions and ours is Lincolnshire specific. It is similar to previous outreach programmes. There's been loads. There's always um, you know, a, a programme of this like. Um, but we have a much bigger focus on evaluation and find out what works. So what works for the young people and what motivates them and what is going to increase that progression onto HE. And the way we do that is we use the Narupi framework, which is on the right hand side. Um, Narupi is broken down into three phases, introduction, development and consolidation uh, across five different themes. And the thinking is if starting at level zero, which is year nine equivalent, going all the way through to year 13, providing that we map all activities against those five uh, benchmarks and we cover the three phases that a student will be um, ready to make a positive decision around higher education, but also prepared to succeed at higher education, which is a big element of what we want to do. We don't want to rapidly increase the number of young people going on to HE, only for them to not feel prepared. So it's making sure that we also prepare them to navigate higher education once they're there. And then amidst COVID-19, we are moving a lot of our outreach offer online. And I think what's really important is, is we're, not, we're not doing that with the 
angle of surviving COVID. Uh, we're doing it because actually we think there's a place for the online delivery even into the next academic year. So um, we will touch on that later as well. So just in terms of defining FE and H encounters, this is from, from Gatsby. Um, again, I'm not going to read this out to you. I'm sure you've all read it you know, a million and one times. Um, but you know, we in particular are looking at that word meaningful encounter. And when you look at that definition of meaningful, um, it's not particularly helpful um, in terms of how, how we make those visits meaningful. And beyond um, the definition of meaningful, how do we just add value? So beyond meeting the benchmark, you know, how else can we add value? to FE and HE encounters. And as well, it's, it's important moving forward that we do make it meaningful. And we're quite aware of that. Um, and Chris and I were having a conversation this morning. Um, we're quite aware that there's gonna be more pressure to make anything we do even more meaningful, um, particularly after COVID, because there are, you know, they're likely to be pressures on schools in the next academic year. We don't know, um, hopefully Sunday's announcement from our Prime Minister gives us a little bit more clarity around what to expect. Um, but you know, we're working on some assumptions that chances are that there, there are going to be less visits. Um, students have lost a lot of time um, and we appreciate that we might not be the number one priority when schools do eventually go back and visits are not going to be up there with, with priorities. So when we do get the chance to take students out on a visit, we want to make them effective. And you know, ways we can do that are if, if we're taking you out onto a campus it's it's incorporating different elements as well so can we can we include an employer as part of that visit so that they're also getting their exposure to the world of work so um yeah, through the uh, careers enterprise company has given our campaign there's loads of different employers there who will hopefully be able to, to support we've got the stem ambassadors network as well um, we've got some really good STEM specific employers who will come and support and can just give some context um, around the STEM industries. So there's loads we can do from that perspective to just increase that value. Um, we're also aware that you know, there's going to be some social distance and friendly visits that you know, we have to take that into account. Um, so we might have those smaller visits as well. Um, we might have a possible change of student intentions as well. Um, you know, a lot of students might decide to study locally and there's the security of staying local, um, particularly amidst COVID. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty around what the impact could be, um, you know, particularly for our year 13 students who you know, are a little bit in, in, in limbo at the moment and some, particularly those who are already on the fence around their post 18 decision will be unsure what to do next. So, you know, it's important that, that we make students aware of the full spectrum of the local offer, if that is something they're going to be considering. There's also the financial impact um, of, of how it might impact, um, particularly disadvantaged young people. Um, you know, we know already from the Sutton Trust reports that disadvantaged young people are more likely to be adversely affected by COVID, particularly looking forward to um, where they go after uh, year 13 or equivalent. So it's, it's just making sure that we're aware of those changing intentions and that we can adapt um, any encounter, any visit to them. Um, and as well, I mean, not to be a, a, a try not to be negative um, around everything's going on, but you know, we undoubtedly will have the, the impending economic crash uh, that follows COVID. And actually what, what normally happens is following uh, an economic crisis, we, we do generally see HE applications increase. So it's making sure that we prepare students um, for making that decision and that they are still as well informed to make that decision if that's you know, the likely scenario. And then we also just have to make up for that lost time. You know, we've lost a lot of time in the academic year. Um, I think particularly for our year 10s and 12s, um, we've lost a lot of time not just from academic study perspective, but preparing themselves for making those decisions next year. Um, a big thing that we're working on with Kaya is um, a year 13 specific program, but as well for year 10s and 12s, it's, it's having that reassurance from their peers that whatever they're, they're thinking about, whatever they're going through, it's quite normal. And I think a big concern for us is that year 10s, 12s and 11s and 13s are 
going to be making some big decisions in the coming months and they're not sharing those decisions with their peers as easily as they perhaps would be if they were in school and that's because of that lost time. So it's making sure that we, we continue to support them as they go through that decision making process. So just going on to FE, um, again, this is really just some, some ideas around how we can make FE encounters and FE visits meaningful. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't seen the up-to-date list of who's in the call, um, but we did reach out to some of the, the colleges to see if they would jump into the call today, so they might be in the chat to answer any questions. Um, but in terms of how we can make FE encounters and FE visits meaningful, um, involving parents and carers, um, and I know I said I wouldn't present some idealistic view of how we can do FE encounters and FE visits, but involving parents and carers can be really difficult. But what we do know is it is really important to keep them informed and to get them on board with the young person's decision because they are the biggest influencer of you know, a young person's destination. So if we can involve parents and carers, then, then we will. Um, and then Kyle, we, we support and are happy to coordinate parents' information sessions um, you know, in school or we can hold them centrally. Um, again, through the Confident Choices Network, if a cluster wanted to host uh, a parent and care information session, then we can help to facilitate that. Um, you know, we just acknowledge how important it is to involve them in, in whatever uh, the young person is going through. We've put that all providers is good practice. Um, and I've been saying, uh, don't want to get into the, the debate around you know, where, where should students be going? Is it, you know, are we sharing students? Yeah, it's, it's just you know good practice from our perspective to, to show students the full range of the options that they've got. Um, and I think again through the Confident Choices uh, Network, um, a really good opportunity is that sort of swap shop element of students. Um, is being able to take some students to one school and then being able to, to send them to the other because you've got that network of schools now where you know we can we can move them around much easier. Um, but yeah, ha having the, the full range of, of providers is, is good practice. And again, Linkai can help facilitate that. Um, you know, we also can fund transport, which I know is, is an issue for, for a lot of schools. Um, so you know, just keep that communication open with your engagement officer around what is it that your students need, where do they want to go, and how can we support. I think particularly from the FE element is it was also including the HE offer that the particularly the FE colleges have. Um, so all of our partner FECs are, are at the bottom of the page um, and all would be willing to, to incorporate the HE element to a visit around FE. I think that's really important because it helps to raise aspirations for the young people. Um, you know, we can really show them the, the possible progression um, towards you know, what is next? So if, if they were to go through a vocation route through the college, how do they progress onto higher education? Because there's still that myth around, if I do a vocation route, I can't progress onto HE. Um, actually, you know, we have a really good opportunity to show them that progression, um, even through the, the FE route. Um, when is, is always a, a big discussion. Um, introduce students early if it's appropriate and Part of the evaluation that we, you know, I've got it in the slides later on is target groups are, are better. So where we can target students, so if you have a group of students who are already asking questions around post-16 destinations, then we can facilitate that. Um, and you know, let, let's show them what, what is out there and really start to raise those aspirations at an earlier age. Now preparation follow-up, you know, I'm sure again, none of you need introduced into to that sort of concept um, but from a Narupi perspective for us it's really important that we introduce students to to what it is they're going to be doing so introducing them to why they're going on a, on a visit to to a college why they're going on a visit to another school actually doing that activity and then consolidating that knowledge in a follow-up session so helping them to understand what they learned and also to, to discuss the other pathways that are still available um, it's just to help to help the students to contextualise everything they've picked up in, particularly if we're introducing students earlier than um, at, at the, you know, the big decision-making stages in year 11 or 13. 
if we're introducing them earlier, let's help them to contextualize what it is they've picked up on. Now, um, I mentioned I wasn't going to go through the statute of duty around Gatsby 7. Um, if you are interested, um, I watched the David Andrews webinar around Gatsby 7. Um, so if you've got 35 minutes, um, that's another webinar that you can watch. Uh, actually, it's really helpful um, to, to bring, bring that into context. But a big part of that is, is discussing bringing in learner, provide, learner providers as well as going out to them. So it's a combination of both is more effective. So having um, FE providers into school to do assemblies, do workshops, whatever that looks like, but also taking students out so they can understand the learning environment as well. And again, that is something that Link Hire, you know, we can help to support that um, where, where the need is there for your school. And as I have also mentioned, the targeted tailor visits have been proven to be more effective um, and you know, to help make it meaningful um, we again can help to support with having targeted visits towards certain subjects geared towards certain industries uh, it can be just for a certain cohort of students um, and it can be to certain institutions you know the, the possibilities are endless um, and it's something that we we will work with you on when it comes to those visits and i think again when we look at a post-covid world that might be more likely to happen uh, anyway, because um, you know, the, the chances are that those big groups, um, you know, we're less likely to be able to, to do that. Um, so having smaller targeted visits um, could be more, more effective, but also uh, more likely to happen. So similar sort of comments around um, making the HE encounters and HE visits meaningful, again, um, the involvement of parents and carers is, is so important. Um, you know, we know again, parents are the biggest influencer. Um, that's followed by the level of qualification the parent has had. Um, so, you know, parents and carers are the biggest influencer for young person's decision making, particularly when it comes to uh, their destination post 18. So, you know, we, we really want to make sure that we're informing parents. And we're reassuring parents that it's, it's a, a good decision to make. Um, there's a lot of myths that still exist. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm from Boston. In Boston, you know, we're challenging a generational attitude towards HE. I was the first in my family to go. Um, and again, you know, it, it was challenging that generational attitude. I remember my nan saying, you know, there's no point, you don't need to go. And that is the sort of attitude we have to challenge. And if that's the message that a young person is getting at home, it can be quite hard to, to beat that and overcome that. Um, so we want to make sure that students are supported, but at the same time, we are involving um, the other influences around them. I've included around um, making sure that we, we introduce students to the full suite of HE options. We've got some really good offers locally around level four, five and six courses at the universities and at our colleges and different pathways do suit different students particularly again in the light of COVID, we're likely to see some changes to, to what students prioritise. And if they want to stay local, it's just making sure that they are aware of what's out there and that their educational journey doesn't have to stop just because they don't want to go out of county. Those different pathways do suit different students. And again, we're aware that a lot of students will just want to go. Um, so this, this falls back again to making sure those visits are targeted, that they are tailored. And just that students are getting as much information as possible around the you know the pros and cons of all the routes so that they can make an informed decision. Just touching on um, you know what do learners want? Uh, when we arrange HE visits and HE encounters, um, you know, they are flexible to, to a school's needs and, and to what students want. And again, Link I can help facilitate those conversations. We're happy to work with the school to to organize those visits and to identify what is it your students want from the visit. Um, a, a lot of the time we're hearing people want the mock lectures. If, if we know that, then, then a lot of the time the universities will be flexible to, to range of mock lectures. And it's the same with the colleges. If you want to taste a session around HE, a lot of them can facilitate that. Um, I think a big, big comment we always get is we don't want generic HE talks because we have them all the time in school. So, if, if we know what it is that the learners would benefit from most, then we can put that to, to the institutions that, that we're visiting. 
again, it's going to be so important that we make these visits effective, we make them meaningful and we get as much from them when we can go on those visits in the next academic year. Um, so again, we can incorporate the employer element as well. Um, I know there's, there's a lot of universities that will uh, bring in a member of staff that you wouldn't typically associate with working within a university so that students aren't just exposed to what studying at HE is like, but are also aware of different careers um, at, at HEI. Um, there's loads of ways we can enrich that experience. It's just making sure that we're aware of what the learners want from those visits. When, um, yeah, same question, when, when should we introduce students to, to the visits? If it's appropriate, then, then we can facilitate them earlier. I know a big comment we get from schools is it can be really hard to arrange a visit for students who, I mean, particularly out of county, who are not in year 12 or 13. Um, and we experience that as well uh, through Link Hire. But we, we can help and we can put that time in to, to hopefully yeah, find those institutions that will take students on campus. There are other options as well. A lot of universities will run um, pre-arranged days. Um, I would use Loughborough as an example. There's some really good subject industry days um, and it doesn't matter how old they are going on to that visit. So there are ways we can get around it. So where you think there's a need within, within the, the learners to actually have those visits earlier, then, then we can definitely do that. Um, and a lot of that comes from, from our student voice. Um, you know, we are planning to do student voice uh, again when, when we can get back into schools next academic year. And I know from, from ones I did last year, we found that a lot of year nine students, for example, want to know about finance at university and they want to know more about HE options. And yeah, myself and, and the school, we'd sort of written that off saying it's too early, um, but found that actually that they want that information. And it's, it's really insightful to know that. Um, so if, if students want this information sooner, then we can do it. Can be multiple visits. Um, we're happy to, to work with you there as well. Um, we also try and differentiate the visits as well. You know, particularly within universities, they are all very different. Um, it's very rare you go to a university and it's exactly the same as another one. And where we're doing multiple visits, um, we're really keen to try and do um, contrasting visits. So where there is you know, a proper difference between the two. So going to a large campus versus a small university, going to a city university compared to one that is just in a campus, um, a low tariff university compared to a high tariff university. It's really good to get that full range of options. And I think as well, it reassures students that there will definitely be a campus or a university for them. It might not be one of the two, one of the three that they visit, but it shows them just how different they all are in range of facilities, in range of the courses on offer, uh, the city that it's in or the, or the location it's in. It's all very different. And if they go to loads and they don't like any, then we can start looking back at those other options as well. So there's, there's so much we can do around that, but multiple visits, you know, we're happy again to try and facilitate that. Preparation follow-up, again, really important that we prepare students for what to expect from a visit. Um, and then the follow-up is also really important, help them contextualise. And again, go back to that reassuring them that, that there are other options, that not every university is the same. Um, a, a big one for me is as well, uh, a lot of students talk to each other around the visits they've been on. And one person's experience of the university will be very different to another person's experience. And it's important that students don't rely on one person's opinion of a certain institution. So, you know, you go to one university and you didn't like it or the weather was rubbish, the lunch was rubbish, and that's your impression of that, that campus. Actually go and visit another one. You know, hopefully you'll find you do like um, a, a different campus and also don't rely on what one person is saying about it. And the same with the actual pathway. Um, if, 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 there's, um, if a peer is, is saying that you know, going down the, the, the level four, level five route is, is wrong, make sure they're informed that actually, you know, there's not a massive difference there in, in going down that pathway. So I think it's just reassuring students that they need to make an informed decision themselves um, you know, it, it's good to get the other opinions of people, but it's ultimately their call on, on what they'll be doing beyond post-18. And again, targeted tailored visits um, towards certain subjects, 
again towards certain industries and again we can incorporate those employers we can work with the enterprise coordinators to be given our campaign we can work with stem ambassadors network to get employers involved um, and again targeting it to certain cohorts and to certain institutions and just turn it back to a confident choices perspective um, where we can collaborate on visits again we're happy to do that so if if you find that in in your um, year group there are only you know, three or four students who want to do a certain certain subject or they want to visit a certain institution if we can find more students from other uh, schools in your cluster then there's no reason we can't arrange a visit um, in that way as well so uh, again a lot of ideas there uh, so never be throwing a lot at you um, but i'm going to hand over to chris now just to look at um, the bgu offer um, and then it'll be back to me share my screen Okay, thanks Ellis. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name's Chris, so I'm the Senior Student Recruitment Officer at uh, BGU. So today I'm just going to go over some of the points that Ellis has mentioned about some of the, the, the uh, opportunities that are on offer for your students, but also how we actually aim to make those visits meaningful. For those that aren't aware of us or don't know much about us, we are a relatively small university, so we've got just over two and a half thousand students. So I suppose one of the benefits of uh, particularly sort of campus visits for your students is that they often don't feel overwhelmed when they visit us. Um, they may be put off by going to a larger university or visiting a larger city. And then when they come and see a smaller single site campus, they're often reassured that actually uh, university could still be an option for them and they, they feel comfortable in that setting. So just to give an introduction to the outreach team and how we actually work, so we're, we're quite a small team of, of eight and we divide our uh, work into pre-16 and post-16 activity. So I myself oversee a lot of the post-16 activity and my colleague uh, Gemma Garzi, she oversees much of the pre-16 work. So over these two and over the two teams, we cover predominantly year nine to 13. Um, however, we, we are able to, to work with postgraduate students and also lower age groups too, if there is demand uh, or if there's a request from a school. We work nationally, um, so all over the country, but we do focus on Lincolnshire and the East Midlands region. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of our students come from these areas and also over the last 10, 15 years, we've developed some really good relationships with, with those schools and colleges. As a partner of Linkaya, um, we work really closely with them, so we're look, look, lucky enough to have them on campus. Um, oops, sorry, lucky enough to have them on campus and we, we often collaborate and share ideas between us. So much of our work is around delivering presentations on campus events and also we have several multi-staged sort of programmes which we can offer students. As well as this, we um, attend career fairs all over the country, so we're more than happy to, to attend those in your schools or colleges. Okay, I think first of all, I just wanted to, to point out our future plans, so how we're tackling um, sort of COVID-19 and how this is affecting our work. So obviously much of our of the outreach team's um, responsibility is actually is going out into schools and colleges and meeting students and doing a lot of the face-to-face -face, um, work in schools. So what we actually did at the start of this was we, um, um, we came up with a survey and we, we contacted all of our um, schools and colleges and we asked them exactly what they wanted from us um, over this period. Um, we, we had uh, quite a good response from that and off the back of it we've managed to pull together a list of, sort of resources um, and presentations which they felt that their students would need during this time and what we're currently doing is um, every week on a Wednesday we are releasing one of these resources and it's a digital presentation but it's uh, it's very interactive it's got voiceovers so students can watch it in their own time and hopefully get all the information they need from them. So in terms of taste today's and open days um, We've made the decision as a university to cancel these up until the, the end of June. So the physical taste of days and open days won't be going ahead, unfortunately. However, what we're trying to do is move these to a virtual platform. So we've had a couple of virtual open days um, over the last couple of weeks for our postgraduate courses. They've been really successful um, and we're looking to move our June open day to that platform too. And in terms of the taste of days, again, we're looking into digital platforms where we can hopefully still host these online. I think for us, our taste of days and our masterclasses 
uh, as Alice mentioned, are really important and they often have the most impact. So if we can try and bring these to the students online so they still get that academic input, um, that, would, that would be brilliant. We're also working uh, with Linkaya on that online hub. So we've got a list of resources which we're developing for them and I think they'll be released shortly. And then lastly, one of the biggest things we're actually doing is utilising our online presence on a number of student platforms. So the, the two main ones we're using at the moment is Unibody and Course Match. Now, Unibody, if you're not familiar with this uh, platform, is basically where students can talk to current ambassadors, so current um, higher education students, and they can chat to them almost like it's sort of a, a, um, an instant chat function, and they can ask them all about their course, about what they like about university, why they chose their university. And we're finding this to be really, really popular just because at the moment, students aren't getting that face-to-face -face contact with, with current students, so they can't ask those questions. So if you know any students that might find this beneficial, I would definitely recommend downloading the Unibody app um, and signing up to that. On the screen, what you can see here is um, uh, the chat function actually embedded onto our website. So if students are sort of looking at our courses, they can talk to a student on that course there and then. The other platform is Course Match. Uh, this is a relatively new platform and it's very much for students who want to do their initial sort of research. Um, and what it does is you, the students put in set criteria of what they're looking for in a course or a university and this matches them to different courses and universities based on that. It's a really interactive tool. Again, it's an app, so it's user-friendly, um, very relevant, and it's, uh, it's very similar to sort of UCAS's search tool in that respect. Okay, so as I mentioned, a lot of our work is based around presentations, um, the on-campus events, and a lot of our WP initiatives. So I think what I'll do now is just talk about what we can offer. Now at the moment, as I said, these are cancelled um, up until the end of June, but we're very much hoping these will go ahead in some format um, from the new academic year. Whether that is in smaller settings and, and groups like Alice mentioned, um, we don't know yet, but we, we are hoping to still be able to, to, to work um, on these and offer these opportunities. So in terms of the presentations and workshops, these are available to all schools and colleges and we can tailor them to meet your requirements. So on the slide, you can see uh, a list of these workshops or presentations that we offer. Um, you can also see the type that they are. So if they're a sort of a more a standardized presentation or if they're an interactive workshop. We've also made it easier for you. So we've matched these against the Gatsby benchmarks. So you can see exactly what, uh, which ones of those they'll be ticking off if, you, um, if we did go ahead with these. We also um, mentioned the year groups that we can offer them to and the duration. So although that's a, the basic offer that we have, I think one of the ways that we try and make these meaningful for you and your students is our flexible approach. So although these are, we've got the set times um, uh, down here, we are flexible in that we can merge one or two presentations together, we can shorten the presentation, we can do a number of these presentations throughout the day to, to cover all of your students. We're more than happy to, to work with you and find out exactly what will have the most impact um, for you. We also try to make them really interactive and memorable. So it's important that when we leave the um, setting, that students remember us, they've had a good time and they go away having a positive feeling about higher education. So we have lots of activities um, and we also give them the option to actually um, sign up for further information. So off the back of that presentation, we'll send that out digitally afterwards along with any, any other information and, and sort of links to open these. The other thing on there is the guest lectures. So this is our um, academic offer. So if you're um, wanting something other than a general presentation, all of our subject areas and uh, academics are more than happy to come out and visit your school or college and deliver a guest lecture on their subject. So we've got um, a full list of subjects that they can offer um, in a workbook. And you can pick these and, and a time that's suitable for you and they're, they're more than happy to travel out to you. We also deliver these at parents' evenings. So if you've got a, an evening um, that you would like us to come and deliver one of these, we can do that. I think Ellis was right in, in what he said um, around that parents are often the biggest barrier. So if we can involve them, them in some of these talks, particularly around student finance um, or UCAS and personal statements and get them more familiar with HE and the processes, I think that'll go a long way. 
Okay, moving on to the Taste Today's and Masterclasses. Um, Alice covered how much of an impact these have, and I think they have such an impact because students come onto campus, they get a feel for the university, they get to meet current students, they meet the academics, they see um, the facilities, so the coffee shops, where they'll eat, the gym, the library. Um, and all in all, they often go away um, realizing that they could, they could see themselves in that setting. So we have a number of um, taste today's and masterclasses that are set over, over each academic year. The first on this list is the university experience days. So these are more general days for years nine to 13 who would like to just find out more about what it's like to study at university. So these involve sort of um, generic sessions around the benefits of higher education, budgeting, UCAS and personal statements, and they're very much an introduction to university. We've then got our subject taster days. Um, so at the moment you can see listed there, we've got the teaching information days, early childhood study, health and social care, and business team entrepreneurship. And these are set throughout the year. So we normally have at least one each term. Um, but these are really good because they're actually led more by the academics. So although the outreach team do come in and they deliver some introductory sessions, academics come in and deliver some um, interactive presentations um, in the afternoon and also talk about the modules and what it would be like to actually study that subject at university. Although we've only got those subjects listed, um, all of the academics and the subject teams are more than happy to host students on campus. So if that's something of interest, um, it's definitely worth getting in touch. And then lastly, we've got the masterclasses. So these are slightly different to the subject taster days in that they are fully um, led by the academics. Um, unfortunately, the June ones this year have had to be cancelled in its usual format, but we are looking at moving those online. But they are um, a two hour session that are delivered by the academics um, and they aim to bridge the gap between level three and level four study. So they do their own, re um, so the academics research uh, and look at what the modules are that they're covering during their level three qualifications and they make sure that they are built into these um, master classes. So they are relevant. How do we go about actually making these meaningful? Well, I've mentioned the fact that we're a smaller campus. We often get um, schools or colleges visitors, visitors because they've already been to a larger university and they want to give their students a taste of a smaller single site campus. We work with you to find out exactly what you want from the day. So these all have a set timetable, but we can work with you and change bits if we need to. So for example, if you would like to try and um, cover more than um, one Gatsby benchmark, or recently we had a, a, a college come who wanted to meet some, actual, some, some employers during the visit. So we set up during the campus store an opportunity for those students to actually speak to some of the employees on campus about their job roles. And that's the way, that's the way we, we change the timetable and work that in there for them. We also give the students plenty of time to interact with student ambassadors and the academics. So most of these on-campus days are actually led by student ambassadors. So they'll have their own set group of students that they lead throughout each of the activities and they get to know them really well. And it, it gives the students a chance to ask a current student exactly what it's like um, to study there. Okay, so the last um, of our programmes are the, the WP, so widening participation programmes that we offer. Um, we're committed to widening participation at BEG and we run two programmes uh, for disadvantaged students. Uh, these are the First Steps and Next Steps programmes. So we've been running these for over 10 years now and we usually have up to probably around 10 to 15 uh, schools on each of them. So the First Steps programme is aimed for year 9 to year 11. Um, and this is a, a two stage programme. So as Alice mentioned about multiple interactions and interventions with students, we found that this is much more impactful than just um, inviting them for, for one day or just going into the school for one day. So we tie these two steps together. On the day, again, they're led by the student ambassadors um, and they go through a, a variety of different activities ranging from sort of budgeting to um, life at university, um, deciding whether they want to move away or stay at home. Um, uh, we look at research skills and also revision skills. So we try and look at each year group from nine to 11 and, uh, and decide what they need and try and put it into that program. The next steps program is for year 12 students um, and this is a four step program. So the idea behind this is we'll come into the school or college on two of those steps and for the other two steps, 
uh, those students would actually come and visit us. This is a really uh, a great programme and I'll talk about some of the impact on the next slide. Um, but we find that because we have multiple schools that are signed up to the next steps, when they come for that campus visit, we invite all of the schools at the same time. So the students um, are not only getting a taste for university uh, uh, life, they're actually meeting new students from different schools too. So we're trying to um, make them realise how, how easy it is to make new friends um, and what it actually would be like on, a, on their first day at university. Lastly, we've got the summer schools. Um, so we usually run these for year 10 and year 12. Um, unfortunately, this year summer school, again, we've had to cancel that, but I know we are looking to rearrange it for the autumn term in some capacity, whether that's just a single taste a day or, or multiple days. Um, but the summer schools are great because we get students that apply for that and on day one they come, they're, they're very shy, they know nothing about university and just over the course of that week you can see the change of attitudes and how much confidence they've got from it. So they're really worthwhile. So just to go into a bit more detail about the Next Steps programme, as I said this is one of our most impactful programmes um, and what we do is we use an external organisation to actually evaluate this. Um, using participant questionnaires at different stages of the program. So during step one, um, step two, three and four, we actually get them to fill out a questionnaire about their attitudes towards university. So from last year's program, uh, the analysis showed us some significant movement in responses to some of those questions. So when asked about how much they know about higher education or university, or um, what options are available to them after year 13, um, a high percentage of the students responded in a more positive light at the end of step four. So it's a really beneficial program and what we find is schools actually tend to sign up to the first steps um, programs and then they actually after year 11 they'll sign those same students up to our next steps too. So they actually end up um, being involved in all of those programs. These are just a couple of case studies uh, from some students, um, current students of ours, that took part in one of our programmes. Um, so we've got Mia, she uh, received a presentation from BG um, on the benefits of going to university. And she said that it helped her prepare for, for higher education as it gave her an idea of, of what was expected of her um, and also how to budget. And then we've got Jacob at the bottom. This is a, he's a primary education student and he attended one of our teaching information taster days on campus. And uh, he, what he got um, out of it was, was meeting new friends and he's still friends with some of those now. Um, and also academically, he learns how the lectures would work and also how to apply those skills to, to a classroom setting um, for, for primary school children. So these are just two examples of what students get out of some of these initiatives. Um, and I think all students react differently to, to different interventions, um, but it's really nice to see that you know, even from a presentation which could have been to 50 or 100 students, that we get students that really do benefit from them um, and they come out there more informed and um, well equipped to make a better decision. So one of the last things I wanted to mention was of working in partnership. Uh, if schools and colleges are interested, we're more than happy to form a partnership um, with them. And this is where we would look at structured engagement throughout the year, so from September to, to June. And we would look at some of the activities that we can offer um, both in your school and also on campus and get some of those dates in the diary um, ready for the next academic year. So we're more than happy to discuss some of those options with you. And lastly, if you want to find out any more information, you can um, find us on these channels. So we've got a LinkedIn page, which is outreach team at Bishop Grove Chester University. You can also email us on outreach at bishopg.ac.uk, visit our website, or if you're interested in those resources, which I mentioned at the beginning, you can sign up to our newsletter, which is the bottom link there. Um, and every week we'll send you an email and let you know um, when a new resource is being released. So that's all from me. I'm going to hand back to Ellis now. Um, I'll just drop the screen. That's great. No, thanks, Ellis. Yes, yeah, brilliant. So, I mean, that ties me, tees me up quite nicely to just uh, carry on what I was going to just mention is to very briefly just look at what some of the evaluation of when we were NCOP, what it was, so, um, NCOP was the previous national brand for the, the programme we're on now. 
Um, so the phase one report came out last summer, um, and yeah, it, it, it didn't really tell us anything that we didn't expect, um, but I think it's reassuring to know that what we think we know about campus visits is what students are also saying. Um, yeah, so you know, campus visits are an effective tool, um, particularly to, to increase the knowledge of young people around yeah, the courses are on offer, uh, the different support that's available, um, actually moving to university student life accommodation. Um, and it just breaks down a lot of those myths, not just around HE, but also around FE as well, um, which is really important. And we know that's really important for disadvantaged young people um, you know, to break down those myths and just get rid of some of those barriers that they have to progressing onto HE. Um, so yeah, these are all just uh, quotes from, from that report. They all say very similar things. Um, but again, I think it's just more important that, that we can be sure that campus visits do make a difference as we move into a post-COVID world, um, that actually taking part in these campus visits, they are effective and we can hopefully help to make them even more effective as well. In terms of what the evaluation will suggest around making them effective, um, I've mentioned quite a lot around having tailored visits, um, but the evaluation does suggest that tailored visits towards certain subjects or towards certain career interests are more effective. Again, we, you know, we're aware that some schools will just want to take a full year group out onto a visit and you know, that doesn't mean that because it's not necessarily as tailored that it's not effective, it's just that it is even more effective when it is um, tailored towards a certain cohort or a certain demographic. Um, and, and, and what we can say is that where we actually develop the social and cultural capital of young people, so we expose them to things that they otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to do so, we also deliver um, a greater impact. Um, it's, it's quite interesting to look at some of the main characteristics that uh, are linked to particularly an increase in knowledge about certain elements of HE, so um, around student living, careers, financial support, and also the application process and what courses are available. The main ways to increase that knowledge of young people, um, the top two are older students, so being older is, is one way of doing that, and going on campus visits. One thing we can't do at Linkai is make your students older, so we can't increase their knowledge by increasing their age, um, but we can take them on campus visits. So it's something that we can actually do to help increase um, their, their knowledge about those different elements. I think what's really important for us um, yeah, from a link higher perspective and then to work with the school on is how do we turn that increase in knowledge into um, a change in attitude and a change in aspiration so that they actually intend to apply to HE and, and to progress into HE. Yeah, the increase in knowledge is great but we then want to yeah, translate that into students feeling more equipped and more prepared to make the decision that they can succeed um, at, at university or at, at another HE provider. So again, um, I think my buzzword submission have um, said that I owe them a certain amount of money every time I mention COVID, could you be very rich right now? But how does COVID affect this? Um, you know, we're aware that there's going to be more pressure on making those visits effective. And I guess from our perspective, we just want to reassure you that we understand that it's, it, there's going to be more pressure on that. Um, and again, I said we, we wouldn't be presenting some idealistic view around if you do this, this is what will happen because we're aware that each school will be different and each school will return in a different way. Um, so we, you know, we appreciate there's going to be more pressure on making these visits effective. And to do that, we just want to work with the school and your students to find out how to do that. Um, we're aware that, that, that there will be less knowledge um, of some of these, these elements of a, a HE progression. So around, um, it could be around student living, could be around support, could be around the application process. Um, we're aware that there, there could be less knowledge because students are not in school, so they would have missed out on um, not just activity with us as an hired, but also activities arranged within the school already. So yeah, that has taken a hit um, following COVID, so you know, we, we need to get back on track. Um, and again, in particular, looking at those year 10s and 12s, we really want to hit the ground running um, with them to make sure they feel supported to, to make a good a positive decision and that they've got the information they need. 
we're also aware that, that there could be less access um, and students have had less access. Uh, the UCAS fairs were cancelled, um, a lot of university visits were cancelled, college visits in the summer, um, all of the open days, you know, I haven't seen any open days that are actually running now this summer, particularly for year 12 students. They haven't had the opportunity to go on them and you know we're, we're all moving our offer digitally which is great um, you know it's, it's accelerated all of those plans to make us make this offer accessible um, and make it available to students but firstly not all students will be able to access that so we need to make sure that anybody who didn't have that opportunity whether it's a, the decision they made themselves or they actually cannot access um, the online offer that we still support them and we still get the information to them um, but, but also online delivery um, and you know, we don't know this yet but you know we don't expect online delivery to be as effective as having that wow moment of walking onto a campus having a look at the accommodation seeing a lecture theatre seeing the facilities that uh, the colleges and uh, the schools and the universities have uh, particularly for anything post 16 post 18 you know we we're going to struggle to replace that. So we want to make sure that we can still do that where possible. And there's also the academic impact. You know, there's, there's been a, a lot of lost teaching time. So from our perspective, we're aware that, that that's going to have to be made up in some, some way. Um, so it relates back to the, the less access to students. Um, but we also want to support students so that they're aware that there are options for them as well if, if they are you know, academically disadvantaged by the pandemic that actually that there are still options for them um, and and everything that's linked to this evaluation um, will be tied into uh, our learner survey that we do with students um, it's uh, I was going to say you were fond memories of uh, not many people have fond memories of administering our learner survey it's a massive survey uh, but we've got you know, a lot of responses and we've just had the reports back that will be shared with schools you know relatively soon but we can help to, to really identify how we turn that towards higher education. So um, that, yeah, that will come as part of the plans from a link higher perspective. Touching on yeah, our next steps, um, hopefully most of you have, have been in touch with us around our online program. Um, it's, it's due to launch for you know, the first few schools who we've got the data we need for. Um, so if you've been in contact, you're aware we need a certain data set to create user profiles for students. Those user profiles should be sent to, to schools on Monday so that they can start accessing that online learning program. That's hot off the press, so don't, don't go chasing your AEO um, if they haven't already told you. Uh, we only found out this morning. Uh, so those user accounts, if you've had that, um, uh, if we've got your information, they'll be with you on Monday, ready to be sent the first set of activities. We're going to continue to add to that. Uh, we're going to continue expanding it as well um, and addressing the gaps that appear. So if there's things that are missing, we'll work with, with you and other providers to make sure that they're addressed. We'll also start planning for next year um, you know, when it's appropriate, when things are clearer, hopefully from Sunday, when things are clearer around what's going to happen. Um, and again, we will use our learner survey data uh, for your area and your school to guide that. Um, that is also a shameless plug that there's another webinar coming in this series around our data. I think it's in July. So hopefully you're still engaged uh, by then. Um, so that, that is to follow. We'll, we'll be discussing the learner data in that one. We also want to understand school's needs. Um, so when it comes to really identifying what school's plans are around how we get back to some sense of normality, they keep us in the loop because you know, we will happily engage with our partners to discuss that and how we can adapt a lot of our programs to suit that. Um, you know, a lot of our activities are four year groups for their visits to big institutions with lots of people. And if that's not gonna be possible, then let us know so we can adapt that offer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we wanna understand those needs and how we can change visits and, and things to suit. Um, and we'll also continue to support, you know, whatever happens uh, over the next few months and, and the next year, you know, what are the needs of students? Um, you know, I mentioned we're working on a programme for year 13 students um, around, you know, the information and the advice that they might have missed out on. Um, 
but anything else that appears that's, that's a real need for students and for schools, then let us know because we can incorporate it into not just the online programme, but into plan more widely for Link Hire um, over the next few, few months. Chris, do you want to run through BGs? Yeah, so for us, um, we're going to continue with our digital resources. So every Wednesday, we'll be sending those out to our contacts. Um, we're finding them to be really positive at the moment. So we're averaging around 70 students have downloaded them. Um, and they're, they're on a, a wide range of topics. But if there are any sort of topics or presentations that you'd like to see us um, provide a digital resource for, then please do get in touch. We're also obviously um, developing those ones as part of the Link IO project too. Um, we're already starting to look towards uh, 2021. So uh, in terms of our um, programmes, particularly the WP programmes, first steps and next steps, um, I believe by the end of this month there will be a booking form if you're interested in getting involved in one of those. Similar to our taste days and master classes for next year, just working on the dates, getting those in the diary with the academics and we'll release those uh, shortly. We're also looking at offering webinars. So for the presentations um, that are in high demand, um, seeing if, the, if we can deliver a, a webinar um, straight to students, much like this one. And I think that way students will be able to ask questions directly to us as well and we can get those answered. And then lastly, just moving our sort of masterclass and taste of events um, uh, for the rest of this year to, to an online format too, so that students still get that academic input. Great. Yes. So, I mean, I'm, I'm conscious that, you know, we've, we've been on the call for an hour. Um, and I'm sure you'd all like to spend much more time listening to me, but we, we will take questions if people want to ask them. Um, I think I've tried to catch up in the chat. Um, there's, there's a couple, um, I think Elaine's question around the virtual activity for parents. I think it's something we can look into and it's not something we've considered yet, but I think it sounds uh, you know, a good opportunity to support parents and carers around um, just some reassurance that FD and HE will be fine uh, next year. So yeah, leave that with us and we'll definitely look at that. I think Richard as well, you mentioned the fact sheets for, for students, parents and advisors. We are looking at our resources, but it's something we can look to pull together as well. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't know if anyone's got any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, if not, uh, we can carry the conversation. There's, there's the Careers Leaders Facebook group um, that, that we can answer questions on. Um, you know, continue to liaise with Link Hire. Um, our email, if you haven't got a, a contact from an air engagement officer, it's linkhire at bishopg.ac.uk. And I'll throw it in the chat function just in case you didn't get that. Um, and I guess from both of us, just thanks for listening. I hope. Thank you very much. Um, there was a quick question on year seven and eight mm. support. Um, I don't believe at the moment that we offer this unless it's part of a day where they come with older students. Um, but it's definitely worth getting in touch with us because we, um, I can speak to the riding participation officer um, just to see if there is anything we can do that's bespoke for those year groups. Um, so I'll have, I'll have a chat to, to Gemma about that. That's brilliant. Yeah, we, on our online programme, we're also including um, Year 7 and 8 access, which obviously we can't normally do from a Link Hire perspective. So we're happy to support them through, through the online programme. Um, so yeah, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope next time that I see you, um, I'll have had a haircut for a start and that I won't be sat here in tracksuit bottoms and my sliders. <laughs> As, I had to own it to Chris, I changed my jumper. I was in a hoodie before the start, but decided to do my hair and put a proper sweatshirt on today. So hopefully we'll meet in better circumstances next time. Yeah, keep safe, everybody.